Hi. And how are you? I hope you can see me. I'm a little bit dark here. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, no, I think now I can see you very well. Yeah. How are you? Fine, how is everything? It's been a while, a while. <laughs> yeah, everything is okay. Mm. Yeah, today I'm I'm glad to be hosting you today. Uh, we are a speak sports, most specially football. We are a speaking football, and yeah, it's, it's great that I know someone who loves football like me, who loves sports like me. <laughs> yeah, me, I know so much about you, but I don't spoil for everyone. So, um, Angela. From Incredible Sports Hub, so you tell us about yourself. Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I think like we told everybody, <laughs> I'm a footballer and yeah. Yeah. also an administrator working with the Cup Women's Football Committee, and also uh, a CEO of Senile Foundation and the founder of the Senile Women's Development Cup. So, yeah, and it's it's amazing to be working with you and most of the team. So it's really nice. How are you coping up with the COVID situation, the lockdown? How have you been coping up? Um, you know, it's because I'm quite used to living alone for quite for a long time. So for me, it's been like um somewhat a normal period. But yeah, I know it's not been normal because we haven't been able to make normal friends. We haven't been able to work out with teammates. But you have to kind of like work alone. So I think I would say it's been a time for me to grow and learn different things about myself and, you know, kind of relax into, you know, into life and do uh, some, something new. So I think it's been okay for me. Okay. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time. We're already a bit late. So, yeah, you've been playing. I've seen you play football for quite so many years. So. At what age did you pick that interest, and who are those people that inspired you to it? Um, for me, I started playing at eight years old, and my brother inspired me to start playing because he used to bring a lot of friends at home in our compound to play football, and I just wanted to be a part of it. And even if I, they never used to allow me to play because I was a girl. So I used to kind of like sit on the side and watch them and just kind of feel envious about them. But yeah, sometimes he would let me play with him and my sister, my little sister, who used to always be in the goal. So yeah, I think from then I got the interest. And when I went to Gaza Junior School, even though I never got the chance to play, when I went to Gaza High School and they introduced football, I was among the first people to go and make sure that uh, I got the opportunity. I think that's how I started my like, getting into that game series. Ah, yeah. Um, equally, I, I, I love football from quite an early age. I loved it. I know football is your passion, and you kept doing that from school, from primary school. Okay, you didn't play much in primary school, but you played in secondary, and then you had to leave. You still followed your passion. So, what's that thing that keeps you focused on your passion? You know, today you want to, I've never had you waking up and like, I'm going to play basketball. <laughs> um, you know, it's, not it's not easy because I think even being with you know, like from as a high school, it was quite a challenge to get opportunities to play as, as women and you know, it was such a culture school. But the first time when I had the practice in football, because I already had the passion as a little kid, I, I wasn't going to let this opportunity pass me by. So I made sure that I put myself out there, uh, I get the chance and I do my very best to, to get selected for the first team. And yeah, once I got the chance to play my first game, I thought, yeah, this is it, I'm going to keep carrying on. and. Even though I saw all the women playing all the time, I knew and I believed in myself that whatever happens, that I'm going to push myself because this is what I love. And, and also, um, school always come, comes first when it comes to this. 
Um, and my parents <laughs> never used to be happy with me playing football. You know, my mom especially. So she used to be like, no, you know, you can't play and all that. But I think for me now, I had to prove to her that this is something that I love. And even going to St. Mary's, you know, we had to put pressure on the team that the women should go to. It all was done because of passion. You know? Because if we didn't have the passion, we wouldn't have to push anybody. You know, sometimes you have to love it. And it's all because of passion that we, we've pushed. I think we got to where we are because of the love that we have for we are not looking um, to get anything out, but it's because we don't Okay, uh, but some people say when you follow your passion, it's not good, you end up maybe messing up or get uh, basically negative consequences. But of course, there are some challenges that you face, uh, you know, in following your passion. Just give us a few of those challenges that you really had to encounter. Um, obviously, like a young kid, I think, and you know, you have that fight with your parents when they are accusing you of playing. So, yeah, that was one of the challenges. You think, oh, you know, your parents just like you. But, yeah, I think I go over that. But I think another challenge is this is not something that you get anything out of it. So many times we do things because we want to get something out of it. And, it's quite hectic, you know, doing something every single day and not doing of it. But because you love it, you still believe, you still, you know, stay committed and give a hundred percent. So sometimes you feel like it's time consuming. So I think that's another challenge because it plays mine, uh, it plays gems on your mind. Like, yeah. Yeah. So this work, this the time work. you have to the time you have to put in and everything. The time you lose your social life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I spend think... I spend weekends when I'm not home and people complain. Yeah. It's like it's a lot of time that you have to give. Uh, so that's also a challenge because time is important to all of us. Um a lot of time consuming, mentally draining, you know, it drains the whole of you, you know. But at the end of the day, I think for me it's about that inner satisfaction when you do something and feel like, okay, this is, I feel satisfied. Because I keep thinking, what do we do that this ask for if not to be happy deep inside, you know? So I think for me, going, even though it's been a, a challenge, I think it's been a more challenging mentally than physically. But you managed to handle it. Yeah, yeah, I managed to handle it because of the passion that I have for this sport. And I don't think it's ever going to stop because I think now I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm, I'm going to stop yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Well, besides <laughs> those challenges, I know, I know you've got benefits, like you've benefited from it. It's not been a bad action, be a bad decision. So there are so many benefits. I've seen you getting accolades and everything. So what are some of those highlights that you feel? Yeah, this I can never forget to talk about. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's uh, something. I think for me, my highlight, first of all, has been getting to work with people because sometimes everything you win doesn't matter, but the people you meet along the way in the journey. I think meeting yourself and uh, the team, the people we, we normally work with, for me, it's, it's been really rewarding because it's like, sometimes you feel like you can't do anything, but you have people to fall back on and ask, uh, how can we do this? Or having that team, which you call family, for me, has been the most rewarding thing for me. And then, um, yeah, you know, the opportunities that have come with have made me forget all the emotional struggle that I've been through. Like, um, you know, now getting to be seen by FIFA, getting to be seen by CAF, you know, and all the things that have come with it, getting into the women's football committee. And it's not about what we are getting, but it's about amplifying um, the opportunities for women and girls that we've been fighting for, for them to get these opportunities with us, you know. Uh, and amplifying our message that sport is good for young girls, you know. 
young girls and boys. So for me, I think that has been rewarding as well for us to get a voice that people can listen to. Then also the fun, you know, sometimes it's hectic organizing the events we've been doing and also for myself playing football, it's been really challenging, like having to pick people and all that. It's not easy at all. And sometimes you feel like giving up. But when you get to that stage where um, things start coming, like you start meeting people, you jump of meeting, um, you get the uh, job, you know, having to work with Setafa was just so amazing. And all these things have come because of the passion that I have for this sport and because of the dedication and the, commit the commitment that I've given in uh, the sport. And for me, I won't even say that it's just myself. Everything I do, we've always done it as a team. It's not always been myself. And that's why, for me, I think the biggest um, reward will always be the team that we've had um, behind everything that we've yeah, you have an amazing team of volunteers, I know. Yeah. So there's a uh, Steve Jobs said people with passion can change the world for better. I believe you're one of those that has changed the world of football, especially women's football in Uganda. I've seen you work on, actually, I've worked with you in the strategy and so many other things. So sending the foundation is a household name here in Uganda. Oh, tell us more about that tournament. Yeah, it is. Tell us about the tournament, you know, who created it. Yeah, for the Asadina Women's Development Cup tournament, which was created in 2016. You know the way it started, yeah. you know, in the funny, you know, playing football myself and having got the opportunity to have football. I thought I wanted to give back to the community and I wanted so many young girls to have playing opportunities because most of them don't get the chance. So I said, okay, right, I was my birthday. I said, you know, to give back going to do this tournament and at first it was more like okay it's going to be like yeah a community event but then we saw so many you know media getting on board and people getting excited uh -huh. something that hadn't been done before in the country so i think the amount of support we got and then having the volunteers i think we started like what with six or seven or something so I think yeah, it's motivated to be doing this every single year. And then on the second year of the tournament, I think we decided to take it serious. Now we had like people doing certain jobs. Yeah, so I think uh, the way it started and now where we are now, it's such a blessing to God because we've had to give up so much to make sure everything gets going. And for me, Setting the foundation and the tournament and all of us being household names. For me, it's about us amplifying the message of women's football and seeing that so many other girls get to play football. It's not all about us being, you know, that's not my goal. My goal is for us to have a voice that people will get to listen to us when we see that women, women all over the country or in communities, or even around the world, need to play football, and they need equal opportunities to play the sport. The passion, you know? Just like me, a little girl who had passion, and I had to fight through everything to make sure that I am. Now, there are so many young girls out there who have the passion, but don't have opportunities, and that's what we want to fight for. Yeah, you brought a lot of change, I saw last week you had the Zoom meeting, the first ever, with the women football stakeholders, and it was successful. It went well. I attended. It was something good. So this week, I also saw something about Wakefield Trinity. You're into a partnership with them. Just throw us some more light about it. People would want to know what's this partnership about. Yeah. Um... You know, with the Zoom meeting, it's an initiative we created and wanted to involve so many women football stakeholders because, yeah, the Federation has done a lot to help women football, but I feel like sometimes uh, they're not doing enough. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being fair by saying that. So, people need a voice, and you know, us coming up with the Zoom meeting, people want to air out their voices, and I know it's not going to take one day for us to change things. Even if it's going to take us 10 years, you know, to make small changes, 
we believe and I'm sure that all these women football stakeholders have given a lot just like us and and we all deserve to get something out of it. We deserve to be listened to by everybody. And and that that Zoom meeting was all about that, uh, uniting people together because when you're united you can change anything. Even the strongest person can be put down when you are united and and for me it's all of us uniting and coming up with initiatives that will change the sport for the better. And with the partnership with Wickfield, I think it's going to be an exciting one. And that Sending the Foundation is going to be great. I know, Sending the Foundation is going to be leading it and coordinating it and, and us getting to visit so many schools, so many communities. And you know, get the, the, the people from London also getting to experience the cultures of. Of, of Uganda, getting to know the people, getting to know uh, different things. So I think it's going to be really, really exciting. And I can't wait for, you know, the whole thing to jump on board and, you know, having uh, work also um, coming on board. I think it's exciting and we are very happy about it. And yeah, I think, I hope it will be really uh, successful. And the whole goal for it is to create opportunities for women and girls just like us, just like we should. We want to create opportunities for women and girls, both on the field and off the field. And, you know, this partnership is like, I think, a start for us, a sending the foundation in terms of, you know, working with, with international organizations as well. So I think it's, it's not yeah. for us. And for women's people, yeah. it's like, I'm sure many will benefit just like from the tournament. I see girls have been called up to the national team. So I'm sure even this, more girls are going to benefit. So, um, Incredible Sports Hub is basically about training children in, in sports, different sports, and both boys and girls. Yeah, uh, many children be there, they have their love for sports, but here in Uganda, there's not much that is done. Just like you said, you didn't play a lot when you were young. But now, yeah, so many people are trying to come up with such programs. So, as you, in your opinion, oh, actually you, I've seen your parents support you from way back. I know your mom is always everywhere for you, even your dad. What would be, in your opinion, what is the role of parents in helping children pursue their passion? Um, you know, it's very, very important for parents to support their young children and to support because uh, kids are growing up, especially the age of um, around eight and ten, the way to fifteen or more. Kids are learning so fast that they're learning. It's for young kids to have those opportunities to be diverse and learn um, skills uh, from sports, you know. And if parents support at such a young age, it's like because now kids have so many opportunities. Um, I, for myself, look at it's all been because of the past dedication. And I won't say I'm there because I still want to have to get to the top or to get to where I want to get. But you can see that um, if I had even more support when I was little, maybe I would be one of the top players in the country. But yeah, I kind of said that I'm not because I didn't get the opportunities to get the skill the craft as a little girl. Um, but you know, now we are looking on to the future. Now kids at this age and in this generation, they have so many opportunities. And I hope that parents do support um, children because now kids can become professional. Um, you know, tennis players can become professional hockey players or footballers. You know, so many sports are now, so many sport, sport activities are now professional. And kids can earn money out of it. Not only that, but they can become coaches, they can become a police they can be conductors in that sport. So it's amazing, and it's like what kids can do. I think a parent's pride is to see their children uh, be the best at what they can do or at what they're doing. And I think supporting them right at the end of is important. Uh, that's what I know so many kids, girls look up to you. You go somewhere and they're like, oh, yeah, that's Jensen in there. So <laughs> what would you, what advice would you give to such children? 
I'm just gonna show her to pass today and pass you. Yeah, it's quite soft letter, but you know, for me, <laughs> I always tell young girls that first of all, you have a passion, you know, if you don't have passion for what you're doing, then you're as much as wasting time. So it starts with the passion. If you love what you're doing, then you have to give a hundred and ten and then follow your heart because. For me, when I don't want to do something, I have to listen to my heart. If my heart is something, then I do it, whether right or wrong, because I know that if I have a mistake, then I'm going to learn from it. So I think it's also not being scared to take things and never ever give up, you know. This journey is non straight. There's a lot of mental, uh, physical, drain you and make you want to stop. But if you're committed and keep going, the results are amazing and it will make it worth it in the end. Yeah, I think it's all about pushing, pushing on even if you feel like it's really hard. Have you ever reached a point and you feel like, oh, I think I made that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would say if I made the wrong decision, but I think I've reached a point where I don't want to do it anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I've so many times, even like now, like every day, so many times, I think, you know, you get those feelings where you don't want to do it anymore. But then, I think the heart moves at the end of the day because I have the passion for what I'm doing. It comes back to be like, this is what I love, so I just gotta keep going. And and now growing up and getting this maturity and seeing, you know, I think what we passed through is that we've got some of the results where we've been happy, and the happiness has overshadowed all the pain that we've gone through. So at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's been like okay, okay, it's worth it. So we keep going, and and I think that's all that matters. You know, once you get to this victory. You forget all about the harsh training and everything. So you just be happy. Like, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm meant to be. Yeah, and being so drained. <laughs> you forget about all that. But I know. it's not easy at all. It's not easy. And every day you feel like giving up, but then the passion always takes over. I, I remember there was... Uh, mama used to tell us 10 laps, and they're like, Oh my god, 10 laps for what? Uh, but at the end of the day, when you lift the trophy, you're like, Oh yeah, I think I needed the 10 laps, yeah. And you know, so, also, um, mm. yeah, I was gonna say that you know, also, St. Mary's, I think, like for my last year as a footballer, I never got to play the last matches, like. East African tournaments, you know, my mind was angry, so yeah, we had to yeah. really watching and stuff. So it hurt me, you know, yeah, but I was yeah. thinking at the end of the day, we started a women's football team. A lot of girls got opportunities to play football in Basari, you know, and it's us who had started that. So for me, it was like a big satisfaction at the end of the day, you know, what we had to give up and what we had to sacrifice, you know. At the end of the day, everything that we went out of it matters more than what you don't get. I believe you've done good work with the women's football, and I'm sure the future generation is having opportunities. It's going to be bright for them. Uh, we didn't have so many opportunities when growing up, but these kids that are coming up, I'm sure their sports is going to be lit with so many opportunities that are coming up. I believe you come back here and do more things apart from the tournament. I'm sure you have so much that you prepared. <laughs> as a way of changing the game here and always looking out for it always supporting it uh thank you jean for being here with us thank you for sharing with us how to go about following your passion it's not easy at times your passion can mislead but it's all about what you have inside you yeah if you know that this is what i'm really doing and this is what i want you can really go for it and assume it with you uh, yeah, we encourage all the young children to do that and then the parents to help them. You know, at times as children want something, they may not be sure, but then they need someone to tell them, you're good at this, you should go for it. So 
if the parents come on board and also take on that, it will be great. The sports world here will change a lot. I know there's a lot going on. Sports is not the same as it was. It's developing, maybe at a small rate, but surely it will be very good. All right, now, Jean, I think we shall let you go. Thank you for joining in. been amazing. All the best. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Angela from Incredible Sports Hub. Bye-bye.